I decided to watch how we found hundreds of potential Earth-like planets by Dmitar Savilov. Three things I liked about the video, which was how educated he was on the topic and how he described his job and how he'd been working with different scientists and different labs, looking at the type of planets, the size, through the course of many years. Another thing I liked was the possibility of different biochemistries because it kind of fascinated me that certain things could look different on other planets or they could be the exact same like they are on Earth or maybe a little bit differentiating depending on the environment and their gravity. <clears throat> I also like the viewing of progression of what we could see compared to from 2010 when the video was created and uh, going all the way back to like the ancient Egyptians only able to see like Venus and Mars and other planets and near Earth, relatively near Earth. Two things I disliked about the video was the connection to Copernicus, who was a scientist in the 1600s. I felt when he brought a, brought him up, um, besides the beginning part, that it was forced and sometimes irrelevant. Another thing I didn't like about it was how he didn't go into enough depth about the Milky Way galaxy itself. I thought that the, he left that thought that almost as open ended. He just kind of left it off. I when I thought he could have gone into more detail, but nothing really big for what I disliked. I did like the video. It was quite fascinating. I was confused about. Since then, since the video has been created, could we see more now? And I also was confused on uh, how long the Kepler telescope was because how long it was out in space because I had thought it was more, but he said four, but he had made it sound in previous parts that it could be longer. That it, like that's how long it's supposed to be in space. And that was just one thing that kind of confused me. Two things I learned was that up until 15 years ago, we really didn't know a lot about the planets. And since like 1995, we've learned a lot more. I also learned that biochemistry could be different in other planets, depending on their environment, how close they are to, to their star, as long as they're within the uh, habitable zone. That was pretty cool. Um, the video connections to chemistry. He s did say that life is a chemical system. It is, and most life is carbon based. He also says that life on Earth and their biochemistry could be much different than biochemistries on other planets. He also states that life is a chemical process and that there are many different forms in which they which the process can undergo. He wants to know um, if biochemistry is universal or is it like gravity like gravity or is it something that could be changed or depending on certain variables. Another thing that connects us to chemistry is that understanding chem will help with learning more about the planets and the potential life on that planet. Because he does say that if you have the presence of water and the presence of some clay, they will naturally form bubbles that contain membranes that also have not cells, but they have things in them that are very similar to that of cells. Something that connects chem this video to me is that I've been fascinated with space and I thought it was, and not just space, the possibility of other life forms. I thought it was very fascinating in that sense. Like the possibility of other life forms not looking like humans or looking like any other animals or species that we come to know on Earth. 
I think it would be fascinating just kind of seeing what they could look like. Like, could there be a life form that's just made of water, like, that could still breathe and talk and almost interact with other types of their species? Or could there be, like, a gas that has that could be visible and that you could, uh, and that could have, like, a brain, so to speak, or just have a life form that just is low to the ground because the gravity is too strong on that planet and just kind of is flat compared to, like, the upright humans. Or vice versa, is the gravity so weak that there's really tall people that look like us but they're like 80 feet tall I think that's very fascinating to think about